Okay, so I'm going to show how to disassemble an HP Pavilion model 15-BS015DX. Um, so that way if you want to upgrade the hard drive to an SSD or just replace a failed one or change the RAM, parts like that. Um, so first what you want to do is remove the battery. So normally this will be kind of in a locked position, this one. So what you want to do is slide both tabs to the middle, just like this. The, heart, the battery will pop up. Just pull it out, just like that. All right, once you do that, you want to remove all the screws. So there's four hidden screws on this model under the corners of these rubber pieces. So you'll have to move them up, um, aside. You can use a needle if you can't pull it up or something like a flathead screwdriver. Um, so there's one under here and then there's two here. There's another one under this corner. All right. And then there's one in the middle that's holding the CD drive in place. And then you got one in the bottom corner here. Right. And you'll have one down here in the middle and another one in this bottom corner. So once you remove all those screws, um, and make sure that one to pull this CD drive out, so you just do that like that. There's no screws hidden under this part. So everything is mounted actually to the, the keyboard side. So the bottom plastic piece will come out separately. So to remove this, what you want to do is you'll notice there's like a slight gap here. So you can use a pry tool or your nails and just get between the gap and then just pull on it like that. Okay. And just go all the way around. So when you get to the CD drive slot, um, it's a little bit different because you don't have like the solid plastic there. So what you want to do is just go around. Once you reach it, you can actually push on this. Like I, it actually was already unclipped, but you just pull on the plastic like that and push on the back here. So that way you can unclip it. Okay. So you can leave the back, um, the clips on the back. They'll come once you get the rest of the sides out, they'll come out actually. So just continue going all the way around, unclip it all, just like that, okay. See, once you got the clips, then you can like wiggle it around and the back ones will come off, just like that, okay. So I don't know if you wanna see this, just in case yours is broken and missing something might be helpful. that piece so now you can see there's actually the hard drive there would be one screw holding it in place right here once you remove that screw you can actually lift it up and then wiggle it to sideways like that to remove it for the new hard drive you'd want to transfer this bracket over so just take these two screws out and then mount it on the same on the, the bottom side of the new drive okay just like that and then you basically just if you want to put it back basically just put it back like at an angle like this and then just wiggle it to push it back in place and then drop it okay so that's how you replace the hard drive if even after replacing the hard drive um the computer doesn't detect it it could be your hard drive little cable connector is damaged so this one has a replaceable one which is nice um, then it has a cable here to connect uh, these U this usb port so if that USB port's damaged, you can actually purchase this and replace it as well. Um, then you got these speakers here. The cable runs along. If your speakers are sounding funny, um, you can replace that. Then you got the uh, BIOS or CMOS battery. That's replaceable as well, which is nice. You got the RAM. You can upgrade it. Um, this particular one has... Let's see here, eight gigs of RAM. So that's plenty, you don't really need to change it, but this is DDR4 memory. Um, so if you were to upgrade it, just know that. This is the model PC4-2400T. Yeah, okay. So if you wanted, you can put more RAM, but eight gigs is plenty for most people. Then you got the um, keyboard connector here. So this keyboard actually, it's, um, they melted it in these little plastic things in place. So if you wanted to change the keyboard, you'd probably want to change the whole palm rest assembly. Um, it looks like 
these buttons for it are attached to this as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't think you'd be able to change the trackpad and keyboard without, like, ripping all these things out. So, most likely, if you change the keyboard or trackpad, you're going to have to change the whole palm rest area and transfer the motherboard over. And then you can see the fan here. I believe there's one, like, two screws holding in place. Some are ones underneath all these. So, got the connector here. Then you got the LCD connector here. The wireless card and then you got the DC jack connector for the charging port okay and that looks like it's pretty much it that you'd be able to remove you can also change the CD drive connector if that's damaged for some reason but um other than that uh, everything else is soldered to the board the processor you can't change it um, it looks like they have a spot for a video card, but this one just has integrated graphics, so they didn't use it for the video memory, and then the, yeah, so, yeah, everything else is soldered to the board, so if they break, you would either need a way to be able to remove these and put a new one, or basically you'll have to replace the motherboard if you can't do that. Um, it looks like there's also a slot here for an M.2 SSD. Um, because it extends all the way. There's a screw mount, actually. Yeah, that's a screw mount for it. So it looks like you can fit an M.2. I'm not sure if that's, if it supports NVMe or not, but yeah, there's a slot for that. Um, and if you wanted to add one of those, you can look it up. But I find the, these SSDs are much cheaper, and I don't feel the speed for an NVMe is worth the added price, so, um, at least until the prices come down, I'd just stick with a regular SATA SSD. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.